Hi, I'm Lila, and I'm going to take you through a yoga flow class today. So we're going to start first in our mountain pose. So your feet are going to be grounded. Lift up those toes and, and spread them apart, and then place them back down. So think about your ears by your shoulders, shoulders over your hips, hips over knees, knees over ankles. Palms are forward. And then we will go into some breath work. Using our square breath, we're going to inhale, one, two, three, four, filling those lungs front to back, side to side, top to bottom. Pause, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, and pause, two, three, four. And you can do this anytime, anywhere, if you have issues with anxiety or stress to calm that parasympathetic system, which is our fight or flight. <clears throat> Moving on, we're going to go to our warrior two. So with that uh, right foot forward, left foot back, with my, my heel lined up with my 45 degree foot, the arch of it, and then my arms are straight out, and it's like someone's pulling you in two different directions with those arms. The thighs are engaged, our navel is in, and we look over that front hand. Next, we'll go to warrior or reverse warrior by dropping the back hand, inhaling up, and then exhaling over, looking down at my foot, straight ahead, or under my arm, if my cervical feels good or neck feels good doing that. And then coming back to warrior two and to our side angle. So drop that elbow. Now you're not dumping into that shoulder. You're using your core to hold you up. You're just resting that elbow. The um, left arm is gonna go behind me. So I open up my chest because our chests get nice and tight by driving computer work, reading. So let's breathe into that chest. Imagine those muscles opening up. And then coming back up to our warrior two. Straightening that front leg, we're gonna go into triangle. And I'm gonna use my block for that. Your block has three sides. So you can use the high side, the medium side, or the low side for help with your pose. So our leg is straight and we're going to inhale and reach forward with that hand and then we're going to hinge at our hips and come on down. So maybe you have the high height here and you're thinking of the arms running in a nice straight line, <clears throat> one from the other. And you're breathing. Don't forget the core and the thighs. Make them work. And then feel like, or imagine someone's pulling your arm up and come back out, warrior two. Moving into warrior one, <clears throat> we step the back foot forward, and now we're like we're on cross country skis. If I wobble, I'm not real stable, I move my foot to the outside of my mat, and maybe I want to move back a little bit so that I can feel my Achilles being lengthened more. Hands at heart center, or you may inhale them overhead. Breathing, lengthening on the front side of that body. And then exhaling down, straighten that front leg. We're going to hinge at our hips and again use our block, coming into our pyramid. So let's let our head hang. Maybe do some no's or yeses and some no's and a circle with that head. One way and then the other. Engaging your abdominals, slowly roll up, stacking one vertebrae on top of the other until you're back at the top. And let's go the other way because we have two sides. So placing that foot forward, 
the left foot, right foot's back this time. <clears throat> Check for your alignment, heel to arch. And then we'll do a little bounce. Inhaling. And exhale, reach up and then over. Again, looking or placing your head wherever it's most comfortable. <clears throat> Coming back to warrior two, lengthen through those arms, peek at your knee, make sure it's not caving in, push it out toward the outside of your mat. Coming down side angle, remember just gently resting that elbow, breathing. <clears throat> right arm behind, and then inhaling up, and then over. Getting nice length through that whole outside of the body. And coming back up, warrior two. Let's have our block handy <clears throat> for our straight legged triangle. So standing tall, hinge way forward, you can't hinge anymore, and then let that hand drop down on your block, if you don't have a block, you can use your thigh, your shin. Some people can use the floor. But we want those arms in a nice straight line. Lengthening. Bring those thighs nice and engaged together. And your abdominals in. Coming back up. Warrior two. Step that foot in a little bit for our warrior one. So our hips are square in warrior one. Adjust your feet if you need to. And hands to heart center or overhead. Whatever feels best for your shoulders. <clears throat> Coming into our pyramid, straighten the leg. Remember we hinge from the hips, lead with the chest as we come forward and listen to those hamstrings. You don't wanna get a strain there, so stop when your body says stop. And slowly coming back up, one vertebra at a time. <clears throat> and stepping to the back. We're going to do go into a flow now. So we'll start with inhaling up and exhaling down. And then bring your hands either on your shins or fingertips and you're going to have from head to toe nice length for a half lift. And then we're going to bend our knees, keeping them soft, walking our hands out. Take your time. <clears throat> and then we're going to walk our dog. Now, if this bothers you in any way, you could always try a dolphin. So we're here, our palms face one another, and then we can lift our hips up toward the ceiling. So downward facing dog. We want our ears by our biceps, our thighs are engaged, quadriceps, and our tailbone rising toward the ceiling. Moving into a flow, we bring our body into a plank, keep the elbows in so we can have our knees down and hug those elbows in for chaturanga, tops of the feet on the mat which lifts the knees up, engaging the thighs, and then lifting with the spine and not pushing. So my hands are not pushing. Then if I want more extension, I inhale, pull the hands toward the hips and look up further. And then pushing back into downward dog. <clears throat> Pedal it out a little. And then we go to our plank. This is a full plank to a chaturanga. Inhaling. This time the tops of feet are on the floor 
and maybe we come up a little deeper into our upward facing dog. But you really need to listen to your spine and don't overdo it. Walking back, we're going to come into a child's pose. So our toes are together, our knees are apart on our mat, and we walk our hands forward and rest our forehead on our mat. This is another option if you need to take a break from poses. You can come into this pose, the child's pose, which is a grounding pose, just feels good. Breathing into that upper back. And coming back up. And we're going to go into some twists. We did our extensions and our flexion. We did our side lateral moves. And now we're gonna do some twisting moves. All the different ways our spine works. So you'll want to make sure you can feel your sits bones. So maybe you have to move some flesh out of the way. Your foot can be inside your leg or it can be on the outside. And I'm going to bring my left hand behind me. I'm going to inhale up my right. And maybe I just grab here or I can bring it on the inside of my knee. Lengthen through the top of your head as you inhale. Exhale, gently twist that lower spine. Inhale, twist again, middle spine. Inhale, and now we look over our shoulder as we exhale. Lengthen up and untwist, upper, middle, lower. And we'll go to the other side. So sitting up tall, so foot inside or out, listening to your body. <clears throat> the hand goes back, it's just helping me stay upright, I'm not really putting much pressure into it. So I'm inhaling tall, lifting up, exhaling here. Inhale, exhale, twist that lower, inhale, we're twisting that middle. Exhale, inhale, look over at the floor behind you, exhale, inhale, slowly come back, <coughs> and setting tall in our staff pose. So we're going to inhale up. And we're going to exhale forward. So maybe you stop right here. We're not trying to round the back and touch our face to our legs. We're trying to elongate that spine and take the pressure off of the discs. So therefore, we keep the chest up, looking at the toes. Inhaling and exhaling. Inhale and exhale. And slowly coming back up. Let's go down on our back. So we're going to keep our feet flat and we're going to roll down. So if you need to, you can hang on. So we just slowly come back one vertebra at a time, imprinting that mat as we go. If you hit a sticking point, just stop for a moment and then continue on down. <coughs> So once we're on the mat, we're gonna straighten out that right leg and we're gonna intertwine our fingers and grab below the knee on that left leg. We're gonna pull it out and then in. This is wind relieving pose. <clears throat> if you feel pinching in your hip, you're gonna back it off and then try to come in again. So this pose is wonderful for keeping our colon healthy Right now, we're stimulating our ascending colon, breathing into it. Exhaling out. And then release. Let's put the opposite index finger. So it feels kind of awkward, 
But this also helps keep those finger joints healthy. So we're gonna grip again under the knee, bring it out, and then bring it in, squeeze it, inhale, and exhale. One more time. And now we're stimulating the descending colon. And then release. And now bring up both legs. And maybe you just can grab at the knees, that's fine. Or maybe you're able to wrap around and get the elbows. <clears throat> Tailbone is going toward the floor. Let's lift our head up a little bit and then set it back down. So now our neck is nice and straight and we can press into that head. Because that kind of, we don't really do exercises for the neck much. And now we're stimulating transverse colon. And you're breathing. And then releasing. And yoga wouldn't be um, complete unless we did a uh, lying twist or some type of twist to neutralize our spine. So we're going to bring up that left leg 90 degrees and grab a hold of the knee. Outstretch that um, left arm. And then we're going to gently pull the leg across the body, listening to your body, stopping when you need to. And then maybe we look over at that left hand. And we're breathing into this twist. And if you had your block, <clears throat> blocks you could stack them and maybe just let the leg rest on there. And then we're going to come back in, lower that leg, bring the other one up, 90 degrees again, and gently draw it across the body, looking over the shoulder now. The important thing, keep the shoulder blade on the floor. <clears throat> so we don't want that lifting up. If my shoulder blade comes up, then I'm going to back it off a little bit and keep that shoulder blade down. And coming back to center, let's hug it one more time. Maybe do some circles to massage that lower spine. Getting ready for our Shavasana relaxation. So if you have lower back issues, put your feet on the floor. Maybe walk them to the outside of the mat. Let the knees fall in. If you don't, slowly straighten the legs. Heels are together, toes fall apart, or fall, fall open. <laughs> we don't want them falling apart. And then the palms are to the ceiling. <clears throat> Rock your head gently, side to side. Maybe close your eyes. Take a big, deep breath, filling those lungs, front to back, side to side, top to bottom. And when you think that it's totally full, take one more sip. And then we're going to exhale. Let everything go. Let it melt off. Any tension in the neck and shoulders, let it roll off down the fingertips and off the body. Releasing the chest, the stomach, thighs knees, shins, and toes. Roll over onto your left side, or right side, sorry, and then push yourself up, taking your time to a seated position. It's much better to go up from the side on your spine. <clears throat> and I want to thank you all for coming today, and have a wonderful rest of your day. Namaste.